Thank you, worship team. Let's go to God in prayer this morning. God, we thank you just for a day to worship you and to, to focus on you. We thank you for the words of, of that song we just sang, and it's easy to sing it, but it's harder to do when we think about surrendering all to you. So I just pray that you just meet us where we are and that you would just help us to, to just move in that direction wherever we are right now. God, I pray you'd open our hearts and our minds today to what you want us to hear and what you want us to know, especially as we just talk about ourselves and, and how we uh, derive our value and what that looks like for each one of us. So, so help us to, to, to hear the things you want us to hear. And then just give us the, the wisdom and the courage to do the things you want us to do. And then, God, I thank you for this day. I thank you that it's the day that we get to celebrate the moms in our lives, the women in our lives, whether they're our biological moms or, or, or someone who's just uh, stood in the gap and, and filled that space and spoken wisdom into our lives or supported us or encouraged us along the way. We just give you thanks for each and every each and every one of them. And, and for those who are here where, where it's just a tough day, maybe because of their own relationship with their own mother or just, just where they are in life, I just lift them up to you as well. I just pray that they would just feel your presence uh, in this day in a very special way. And God, we just pray for, for folks here who are struggling, who have uh, medical issues they're dealing with. Maybe they're coming up. Maybe they're ongoing. Uh, those who are dealing with relational struggles, those who are dealing with things at work and and at home, and even in their communities. Again, we just pray that you would meet us right where we are. And, and then I, I pray, God, as we worship you today, as we focus on you, maybe some of that tough stuff would just look a little bit smaller in your presence. In Christ's name I pray, amen. So good morning. Welcome. Thanks for being here. If you're online, I want to welcome you. It's great to have you, you worshiping with us uh, this morning. Uh, glad we can all be together in one way. Or another, if you're if you're here in person in the blue seats and it's your first time or you're checking us out, um, there's a there's a connection card right in front of you. If you're online, there's a quick link to that connection card there. We just love to connect with you. You can always use both of those in person and online uh, to communicate needs to us. If you have prayer requests, our staff would love to pray uh, for you. You can you can write that out. Or if you have questions or comments or anything that you need to know about, um, just use that card for that. Drop it in the offering box on your way out. And we'd love to connect with you however we want to. A couple of announcements uh, this morning. First, our bingo night is coming up this coming week, next weekend. Uh, so don't miss it. It's always a huge, huge blast. Lots of fun for all ages. Um, so join us for that if you're free uh, on Saturday night. It'll be out uh, in the, on the other side of the, the property, on the other side of the building, outside if weather permits. Um, and so it'll be a, a great, great time. So join us for that. We've got prizes. Lots of fun. Bring your dinner with you. We'll have tables set up for that. Uh, invite your family or neighbors or friends or whoever you want to and, and, and join us for Bingo Night. Uh, there is a link. If you, if you scan the QR code in front of you, if you go to your newsletter uh, or to our website, there's links to every, all of this. But if you find your way over to this event, there's a sign-up genius for that. We'd love uh, to have you sign up ahead of time if you can, just so we can be prepared for that. If you don't sign up and then get, get freed up, please join us. We'll have extra seats uh, ready to go. And then the other thing is our meal pack. We're going to be looking at this each and every Sunday, uh, at least through this month as we, we kind of entered our fundraising stage for our meal pack. Our meal pack will be in November, but we need to generate some funds for that uh, between now and then. So Donna's going to come in just a minute to tell us a little bit about what that looks like. But, but check out this video to see the impact of meal pack. Imagine a world without hunger. This is the world we dream of. A world where bright futures are the norm, where children, families, and communities thrive. But every year, millions of children are still dying from preventable causes, such as pneumonia, diarrhea, malaria, and undernutrition. Hunger causes nearly half of deaths in children under five years old. In spite of all this, we know that hope is not lost. It starts with food. And it starts with all of us. We believe in feeding kids. As a Christian nonprofit, we're dedicated to seeing every child whole in body and spirit. Nutrition allows children to grow, thrive, and develop to their full potential. We believe in feeding spirits of children around the world and volunteers and donors. We love like Jesus, with abandon, because he first loved us. We believe our lives are made better when we give our time and resources to help others. We believe in empowering communities, 
that all people deserve the dignity of self-reliance. We work with food distribution partners that stay with communities for the long haul, empowering them to move from relief to development. Imagine a world without hunger. It's not just a dream, it's a possibility. And it's because of you. So Donna's going to come and share with us just a little bit as she does. Uh, that, that you, you got to see what a meal pack looks like in some of those clips. So what we do is we break down all of this space here and set it up, and we do it right in here if you've never been to one of our meal packs. So that's what it looks like for us. Thanks, Donna. Great. So the reason I'm here is to kind of give some additional options um, for trying to raise money, like David said. This is the fundraising part. The actual meal pack is going to be in November. And um, so one of, the th one of the things that I thought about and wanted to communicate to folks was um, looking at your, your employer. Um, they may do uh, uh, sponsor of it, thanks. Um, they may be willing to sponsor one of the pallets or even a box, or they may be willing to match your contribution if, if you let them know. Um, so that was one of the areas we were looking at. The other thing is um, reaching out to your friends and coworkers. Perhaps they're, um, they've come before and they enjoyed it and they'd be willing to come back and maybe not only come back and pack, but actually help don donate, um, you know, either sponsoring a pallet well, or a box. Um, that's pretty doable. And then they also have the meal for a, an individual for a year is about $106. So. Um, one of the things that Mary Beth had mentioned last week is if you sponsor a pallet, we're going to reserve a table. And so if you could get a collection of people that were willing to sponsor a table, uh, a pallet, we'd set up a table just for them and then they would all be able to pack. Um, so maybe consider that and, and ask when you're, when you're reaching out to your friends and coworkers, seeing if they're willing to donate, maybe they'll come and volunteer with you. It will make the experience so much better. And, and maybe they'll be willing to donate in the future as well. Uh, on the slide I've got up here, I've, I've got their, um, you know, their uh, tax-exempt ID for, the, for Feed My Starving Children in case your employer needs that when you, when you reach out to them. So I hope that's helpful. It's just an idea so that we're not all, you know, in the church responsible for donating, that there's some other organizations that might be willing to help. Thanks, Donna. <laughs> Yeah, and if you're if you're if you talk to your company and they need extra information, we will give them any information they need to help them help help you help them with all the paperwork because we've done this in the past with some other things that we've done. Uh, and one of our small groups, I heard them chatting before as they were coming into service, talking about how they're gonna how they're gonna work together. It's, they're back in the back of the wave at us, ladies. They meet on Wednesdays, and they were talking about how they're gonna come together as a small group and and be a part of this. So that's a great uh, idea uh, as well. So get this out of my way. So let's go to God in prayer just about meal pack. God, we thank you for another opportunity to serve um, children all around the world who are dealing with malnutrition and hunger. And we thank you for Feed My Starving Children. I thank you that not only do they help feed kids, but they help support other organizations like clinics and schools that are doing other great things uh, in their community. So just, just bless all that they're doing. Bless our church. Bless the other churches that are in the same phase as we are of trying to, to raise the resources in order to do this later in the year. In Christ's name I pray, amen. So we are starting a brand new uh, series this week uh, that we're, we're calling, um, we're going to be in it for the next three weeks, we're calling it UBU. I forgot my graphic this morning, we'll have it up next week. Um, but we're calling it UBU, uh, and, and, and here's where the title came from. If you read your newsletter, I mentioned that we're going to be doing this series, and I kind of teased it out and said I'll, I'll explain the the title, when we get there, the title was inspired by my daughter, who's not here. I thought she was going to be here, so maybe this won't embarrass her too much. Uh, but I did tell her I was doing this, so I think it's okay. But anyway, it, it came from, from my daughter. It's something that I've said a lot over the years, particularly to my daughter, uh, because my daughter is, she's 19, she's a 19-year-old college student. Uh, she's a wonderful young lady. Uh, she's very independent. Um, she's highly confident in herself. She's just a strong, strong uh, young woman. Uh, she has her own ideas. She's always willing to share those ideas, especially at home with us. And so uh, all of that. And when she was younger, when she was like in elementary age, like just a little kid, 
um, she, would, she would express her independence in a lot of different ways, sometimes positive, sometimes not always positive. We all do that. Um, but one of the ways that she would do that would be in, in the clothes that she would wear. And early on, she started dressing herself, right? I do it, I'll do it myself, uh, was her motto. Uh, and, and, and sometimes she would get dressed, and she would come downstairs, and she would show up for breakfast or ready to go to school or whatever. And Marcia and I would just look at her, and we'd go, really? You're going to go out in that, right? And, 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 or, or, you know, or sometimes we would just you know, shake our heads and just not say anything at all, because what do you say? And my tendency was because, you know, I, I just kind of want to be in control of things and I want to help everybody have positive experiences. And my tendency was to tell her to go change or, you know, put on things that at least come close to matching and work together. So I would fight that urge as a dad to do that. And one of the ways I would fight that urge is I would just look at her and I would say, as she walks through the back door there, I would say, Abby, you be you. <laughs> That was a great moment, wasn't it? I couldn't have arranged that any better than if I could. <laughs> awesome. But I would say, you be you. You just be yourself, right? You be who you want to be. Don't worry about what I think. Don't worry about what other people think. You be you. So that's where the title of this series came from and what we're going to be talking about over the next three, three weeks. And what we're going to be talking about is this trap that we all find ourselves in from time to time. We all fall into it. And it's this trap of comparing ourselves to other people. And, and, and not just being concerned about what other people think, that's, that's certainly part of it, and we'll be talking about that a little bit, but we fall into this trap of, of looking to our left and looking to our right at the people around us to see how well we're doing and to judge if we're okay. And, and this comparison thing that we all deal with, it starts out really, really early, I think, I, at least by the time we're in middle school, probably earlier than that. In, in elementary school, uh, because like I said, uh, we, you know, we live in a world where we're just always looking to our left, looking to our right, trying to figure out, you know, how am I doing? How am I, how am I measuring up? And, and basically, what we all want is we all want a bigger er, don't we? We want a, we want a, we want a, a bigger er added to the adjectives that describe, describe us. Here's what I mean by that. We want to be richer, right? We want to be skinnier, we want to be smarter, we want to be prettier, we want to be cooler, we want to be successful-er, and I realize that's not a word, and some of you will send me an email for that one, but, but I just want more-er, don't I? I mean, I want more-er than you have, because if I have more-er than you have, then I'm going to feel better about me. And, and I just want to go home from work and being around those people or, or having coffee with someone and, and, and say, you know, they're good, I mean, they're, they're good. But, but I'm er, right? I mean, whatever they are, I'm er added, added to it. And, and, and then it's even worse than that because you start dating. And you want your boyfriend, you want your girlfriend, you want your significant other to have some er too, don't you? I, you know, I want him to be richer. I want her to be smarter. I want him to dress better. It's all about that kind of stuff. And then you get married and you want your spouse to have lots of er. And the problem here is we just lie to ourselves on this one. And I hope in the next few weeks, if we don't learn anything else, we'll at least stop lying to ourselves about this because we tell ourselves, well, I just want my husband, I just want my wife, I just want, I just want my spouse to, to reach their full potential, right? And, and, and so we start erring them. And, and, you know, you need to get a little err here and you need a little less err here and, 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 and all of that. And, and it's really not even about them if we really dig deep and think about it. It's what... It's what we think other people are going to think about us because we're connected to them. It's about what you think other people are going to think about you. And then you have kids, right? And, and you see what everybody else's kids are doing and, and where they're going to school and, and, and what they're reading and how advanced they are and how they're, how they're progressing and they're playing sports and all of that. And then you start comparing your kids and you start erring your kids. And again, it's not really even about our kids when we dig a little deeper and we say, well, I just want my kids to reach their full potential. No, really, you're, you're comparing your kids to other kids and you're really comparing yourself to other, other people. You're comparing your parenting to other parents. You're comparing your parenting skills to those people. And, and, and we love it. I mean, we won't admit this, will we? Uh, but we love it when our friends' kids mess up, don't we? I mean, we can't say that out loud because we're Christians. But you do. You love it when they get in trouble. You love it maybe when they don't get that scholarship or, or something like that. 
And then there's this other side of things. There's, there's the people that we, that we really do have a little bit more err than they do. And we look at them because, you know, they're a little heavier, they're a little poorer, they're a little slower, you know, and I noticed your daughter's a little shorter and your, your son's a little nerdier and all of that. And now we have a problem because we start feeling superior er, don't we? And again, I made that word up too. Uh, but, but, and so you, you look to the left and, and there are people that are better than you and you look to your right and there are people who are not as good as you, but, but, and, and you're just in the middle of all that. And either way you look at it, it's really just out of whack, isn't it? I mean, but, but there we are, and that's just the way we live because we've learned that all of our lives from the culture that we live in. And, and then there's another group of us, kind of a, a subcategory to all of this, and, and we're not happy with er at all. We want est, don't we? Right? I, want, I don't want to be richer. I want to be richest. I don't, want to be, I don't want to be smarter. I want to be smartest. I don't want to be prettier. I want to be prettiest, right? I want to be in a category all by myself. And when people compare themselves to me, they're like, whoa, check him out, right? Now, I'm not saying that that's me at all. Okay? I'm just saying I've known some people who, who were like that, okay? And maybe part of, uh, there's a part of you in all of this that we're talking about. And again, you know, you lie to yourself sometimes. We all do this. You say, well, I'm just, I just want to reach my full potential. I just want to be my best. And, and, and in a minute, we're going to see that, that there's a place for that. But, but there may be a thread of this other thing in you, because I think it's in all of us. And, and I know it's in me. And, and where, where if I'm not careful, I'm constantly measuring myself by the people around me trying to determine, am I okay, based on the people I see around me? So here's the, here's the bottom line. If you don't get anything else I say today, if you've if you got to tune me out for the rest of this series, here's what I don't want you to miss. And this is what we're going to talk about over the next three weeks. In fact, if, if we would all just take this one simple idea and would just put it on a card or, or somewhere in a place where we would see it all the time, and every time we started kind of heading in this direction, of, of how am I doing compared to them, uh, if we would just take this one idea and let it, let it change our thinking on this, it could be a real game changer for all of us. And here it is. There's no win in comparison. There's no win. There's no win in comparison. There's no finish line. There's no, there's no feelings of fulfillment or satisfaction in comparison. There's no win in comparison. I mean, think about it. If, if you're better than other people, well, that doesn't really help you, does it? And if you're, if you're not as good as other people, that doesn't help you either. There's no win in comparison. And in fact, it can, it can really be kind of dangerous and, and harmful to us. And here's why I say that. Some of you, if you're honest, you have debt. You have, you have financial debt because of this right here. I mean, you've, you've bought things, driven things, lived in things, renovated things, and the only reason you did it was because of what you saw other people around you doing. Some of you, you're, you're driving your spouse crazy. You're driving your kids crazy. You're pushing them to be something else. And again, you're lying to yourself because this is what's at the bottom of it all. And so much of, of, of what you're trying to get your spouse to be, your kids to be, it, it's, it's, it's more about you than it is about them. And so it's dangerous because our tendency to compare ourselves to the people around us, it has the potential to actually hurt the people closest to us, the people that we love the most. So there's no win in comparison. So over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about how do we encourage our kids? How do we, how do we encourage our, our spouse? How do we encourage ourselves to improve and to be the best that we can be? Because we all need to improve. We all need to work hard and, and do all of that. So how do we do that and not get caught up in this trap of comparing ourselves? Because there's no win in comparison. And today, we're going to look real quickly at some things that Solomon said Way back in the Old Testament, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be in the New Testament. Next week, we're going to look at some things that Jesus himself said. Uh, but today, we're going to look at the book of Ecclesiastes. And if you're here today, if you're tuning in online, if you came with someone, if you're not normally a church person, a religious person, if you're not sure what you think about all this God stuff and, and religion and, and all of that, and, and let me encourage you to, to find a Bible, download it on your phone or whatever, and just read through the book of Ecclesiastes. It's a great place to start because here's, here's what will happen. You'll be, you'll be reading along and you'll discover that there are things in there that you already agree with. 
and things that you probably have actually heard, but you didn't even know they were in the Bible. It's amazing what's in Ecclesiastes. And like I said, it's a safe place to start if, if, if you're not really a religious person because, one, there's no miracles in it, right? It's before the times of Jesus, so it's a great place to start if, if you're not sure about all this, and it's just packed full of wisdom. Ecclesiastes is all about just common, everyday wisdom. And so here's what Solomon said. And by the way, Solomon is the person, if you're wondering, Solomon is the person who did more than you'll ever do. Okay, he just, he just did. Whatever you think you're going to accomplish, you're not going to keep up with, and I'm not going to keep up with Solomon. Solomon was considered the wisest man in the world in his day. I mean, he, he created one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. He was the wealthiest person in his lifetime. Kings and queens came and knelt before him and asked Solomon for his advice and his wisdom. That's Solomon. And Solomon, he looks at the world and he addresses this issue of our tendency to compare ourselves to other people. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, here's what Solomon says. He said, And I saw that all toil... And all achievement. Okay, Solomon, so, so how much toil and achievement? Solomon would say, all of it. Every bit of it. He says, I saw that all toil and all achievement spring from one person's envy of another. Solomon's, Solomon's like, look, I, I, I've been watching people. It's what I do. I'm a, I'm a student of behavior. And I realize that, that for the most part, the thing that drives people is competition. The thing that, that drives people is, is they're looking over their left shoulder, they're looking over their right shoulder, and they're trying to figure out how they're doing based on how everybody else is doing. You know, where they're shopping, where they're, where they're living, what they're wearing, all of that stuff, all of that. And they're driven, they're, their toil, he says, is driven by what they see people around them doing and what they see the people around them, what they have. And now, now think about that statement. Solomon made that statement over 3,000 years. Years ago, so this is not a new thing. I mean, this comparison thing, this has been around for a long, long time. 3,000 years ago, in fact, in fact, let me just summarize his observation with this statement. Here's essentially what Solomon said. Solomon saw people determining where they were based on where everyone else was. That's what that passage is essentially saying to us. He saw, he saw people determining, you know, am, am I okay? And they look over, yeah, I think I'm okay. Am I okay? Mm, I'm not so sure I'm okay. You know, are my kids okay? And they look over their shoulder and they're looking at those other kids and they're like, yeah, I think my kids are okay. It, it, it's, it's like he said, they, they looked around and they looked at like what everybody else was doing and what they had to determine if they were okay based on what everybody else was doing. He said, this is, this is just what I've observed. This is just what I've noticed. It's human nature. And then his, his summary of this whole idea is, is this. He says, this too is meaningless. It's a chasing after the wind. To which we'd say, so Solomon, what do you think of this whole thing of looking to our left and looking to our right and determining how I'm doing based on what everybody else is doing? And Solomon would say, it's meaningless. It's meaningless. It's chasing after the wind. But Solomon, chasing after the wind? There's no catching the wind. Exactly. There's no finish line. There's, there's never a sense of of satisfaction. There's, there's never a sense of fulfillment. There's never any peace to which some of us say, okay, Solomon, so, so are, you, are you saying that we're not even supposed to do our best? Are we not even supposed to try? Are we not supposed to be ambitious and, and try to, to achieve? And are you saying that we're just supposed to just kind of you know, fold our hands and do nothing? And, and Solomon, again, who was the wisest man in the world in his day, he says, fools fold their hands. And when they do, they ruin themselves. In other words, don't you think for a minute that I'm telling you not to be ambitious. I mean, I'm, I'm Solomon. Have you, have you seen my temple lately? I mean, I'm Solomon. Have you, have you seen my gardens? I'm Solomon. I've got more gold than Fort Knox. I'm Solomon. I've got 300 wives and 600 concubines. I'm a busy guy, right? I've, I've been around. I've done a few things. So I'm not saying for a minute that you sit there and you do nothing and you don't leverage your potential and become the best that you can be. I'm not saying that at all. Only a fool would fold their hands and do nothing. And the idea in this little verse is, is that if you do nothing, eventually you self-destruct. And, and then this next verse, this is, 
This is a one of the verses in Scripture that if you're at all inclined to memorize a verse, this is a great place to, to start because the whole idea of, of there's no win in comparison, here's, here's his way of kind of painting this picture for us. Here's what Solomon says. He says, better one handful with tranquility than two handfuls, than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. And, and the Hebrew language here, we miss it because we don't read Hebrew. But the Hebrew language here is really, really deep and, and, and really, really rich. And, and here's what it looks like. He says, he said, it's better to have one hand open with the implication being that God can put in and God can take out whatever God wants. That it's better to have one hand open. It's better to have one hand open and, and to only have what one hand can hold rather than to have two fists clenched together with everything that we can get our hands on. It's better to have one hand open with peace and with tranquility and, and to learn to be content with whatever we have or whatever we don't have than to have two fists full of stuff clenched together around everything we can get. He says, because if you, if you, if you live like this all the time, he says, if you live like this, he says, you're never going to have any peace. You're, 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 there will never be any tranquility in your life. It's, it's chasing after the wind and you'll never catch it. Because, because after you've, you've tightened your fingers around everything that you can get, there's always something else out there that you don't have. And, and so you're never going to have any peace. And Solomon, the richest guy in his generation, he says, he said, I've been watching this and, and here's what I've determined. It's better to have one hand open, one hand full with tranquility than two fists stuffed full with things then that are never actually going to satisfy you anyway. Now, if, if we just would let this one idea right here that Solomon gives us just kind of take hold of us, and if we would allow that one thought as, as we begin to kind of reach for more, if we would allow this one thought just to kind of be our filter in life, it would be a game changer for us. Better one handful with tranquility. So let me ask you a question. Do you believe this that Solomon gives us? Do you, do you, do, do you believe that? I mean, well, yeah, David, it's in the Bible. Of course I believe it. <laughs> I'm not talking about... That I mean, you in your world and in your life, what, what if what if you got there? What if we all got there? I mean, how how would that change us? How would how would that change our relationships? How would it change our our families? The the, the bottom line again is there's no win in comparison. I mean, what what if we learn to catch ourselves when we when we started to kind of you know, do this in life? And what if we, what if we started to catch ourselves when we started to do that in our academic careers or in our professional, professional pursuits? What if we learned to, to, live, to live like this in, in, in our families? What if, what if we learned to live, and we're going to talk about this over the next few weeks, but, but what if we learned to live like, like this with, with our relationship with God? I mean, because here's the deal. The bottom line is all, all of us, we're using something. We're using something as our mirror. And, and all of us are looking somewhere to determine how we're really doing. And the question for us is, what or whom am I going to use as my reference point to tell me that I'm okay? And, and, and do you know what I've learned over just over a little over 30 years of working with people? Every one of us, no matter how old we are, how young or old we are, no matter how successful we are or, or what our family dynamics look like or anything like that, Every one of us are, are looking for someone to tell us that we're okay. We all want to know that we're okay. For someone to say, you are, you are right where you need to be. You're, you're doing exactly what you need to be doing. You don't need to do anything else. You're fine. We're all looking for that. So the question that I want to leave you with this morning is, is where are you looking? Where are you looking? I mean, is it family? Is it, is it a parent? Is it your bank account, your salary, what you own? Is it, is it your boss or the, the industry that you're in or your position there? Is it, is it how you look? Is it, is it how well your kids are doing? Is it your husband? Is it your wife? Is it your spouse? What, what's, what's your mirror? What or, or whom are you looking to to feel like, hey, I'm, I'm okay? And, and Solomon says, if you look at other people, if you're not careful, you're going to be living like this. You're going to be living like this, and you're never going to feel like you're okay no matter what you have or what you do. 
Solomon, who, who had it all and did it all, he says, I've been there and I've done that. And he says, and I'm telling you, it's chasing after the wind. So next week, we're going we're gonna to dive into this question of what should our mirror be? As, particularly as followers of Jesus, if that's you, what, what, should, what should our mirror be? And, and, and if we're going to look at someone, who should we, who should we, where should we look? Who should we look at? That's next week. But before we leave today... I just want to make sure you're as stirred up as you can possibly be, okay? So I, I've got a few questions that I just want to, I want to leave you with. And, and these, I'll just give you a heads up right, right up front, and I hope you don't walk out on me, but, but these, these are my make you mad questions, okay? Just a heads up. And these are, these are my I wish he hadn't have asked that question. These are I wish he'd stopped about four minutes earlier questions, okay? But here's the thing. I'm telling you. I'm so good myself at, at self-deception, and, and I'm the pastor, right? And I know every chapter and, and every verse, okay? I know them all. So I'm good at this, and I just want all of us to leave here facing the fact that, that you know what? I do this too, and, and, and I may be driving people around me crazy doing this. And, and David, I've got to be honest with you. When you said one handful with tranquility, that bothered me a little bit. When you said one handful with, with tranquility, I thought, that's not enough. When you said one handful with tranquility, I thought to myself, well, who needs tranquility, right? Give me those two handfuls. If that's you, you need to listen because, because you may learn something. And, and, and here's, here's what I don't want you to miss. I, I, I'm not talking about being less productive, okay? We talked about that. We heard what Solomon said. He was incredibly productive and successful. And next, next week, we're going to hear uh, from Jesus who, who was perfect and and save the world. And I hate to break it to you. I don't think anybody's going to be talking about you 2,000 years from now, right? Uh, so, so we're not talking about being productive. So here's, here's some questions that you might want to just, might want to write them down or snap a picture or whatever, or track back later this week. And just think about these that last uh, over the next week. But, but here's the first question. Are you exhausted from trying to keep up with and fill in the blank? Are you? Are you exhausted? Are you, are you tired? I mean, I mean, let's be honest. There's is there something in you that, that's just like, you know, you know I, I wish I didn't even know what they had over there, right? I wish I hadn't even seen where they lived or what they drive or, or where they vacation. I, I wish I didn't even know any of that because here's the deal. If we weren't aware of what everyone else had or what they did or what they made or, or anything like that, we'd be content, wouldn't we? I mean, uh, awareness is what makes us discontent. But you know what? Awareness isn't going anywhere. So, so are you exhausted? Is there, is there something in you that's just tired of trying to keep up? Second question, are you broke from trying to keep up with fill in the blank, right? Very similar. Is this part of a financial issue for you? And, and you blame it on the debt. Maybe you blame it on the economy and all that stuff. And all that stuff is real and has a real effect on, on all of us. But maybe before all of that, at the root of all of this, uh, before all of those financial problems surfaced, there was something in you that just for the sake of keeping up with someone else, now you've got some financial problems in your life. I mean, could that be a part of, of some of this? Question number three, are you, allowing, are you allowing what others have from keeping you from enjoying what you have? And because because you, you have eight and a half foot ceilings and you just visited their house and they got ten and a half foot ceilings and now you hate your house, right? I mean, you walk in, you feel like you got a duck now or something, right? And, and, and that's, that's chasing after the wind because you know what that is? Even, even if you got what they had, there's somebody out there with a bigger, bigger er, and somebody's out there with an est, right? And we're just chasing the wind. And, and you're allowing what others have to keep you from enjoying what you have, what God has blessed you with and allowed you to have. Number, number four, are you allowing what you don't have to keep you from enjoying what you do have? Now, now wouldn't it be amazing if, if, if we could just get to the place where we say, you know what's better? This, right? This, this is better, and this, this is where I'm going to strive to live. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live with one hand open with tranquility. I'm not going to live with two fists clenched full trying to grab everything I can get and have more. There's no win in comparison. There's, there's no win. And here's the, here's the last question, just simply, are you chasing after the win? Are you? Are you chasing the wind, trying to catch something that you're never going to catch? Here's the last thing, and we're done. You cannot be, if you're a follower of Jesus, you and I, we cannot be genuine followers of Jesus and chase after the wind at the same time. This is, this is a spiritual issue 
for those of us who are followers of Jesus. If you're a Christian, this is a huge spiritual issue. So together, let's stop. Let's, let's go from this to this. Let's stop chasing the wind because here's what we all know, whether we admit it or not. There's no wind in comparison. And we're going to pick it up right there next week, so don't miss next week. Let me pray for you. God, we all do this. We all, we all get discontent because we look around and we see what other people have, what other people are doing, what their kids are doing, and all of that. We get worried that, that we're not where we should be or our family's not where it should be and all of that. So God, I pray that you would just help us to, to just take a real hard assessment this week as how we're living. And are we living with those two fists clenched full of everything we can get and wishing we could get more? Or are we really living with one hand open and we have some peace in our life? And God, I just pray that you would just help us to, again to, to think hard about that and to look deeply at ourselves. And then God, I pray you'd bring us back next week in, in some way, whether here in person or online or catching it later, and we would hear what you have to say, not just about all of that, but what you have to say about us and our value and how we can know we're okay. And so God, I just pray you prepare our hearts for that this week. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Hey, don't forget our bingo night. We hope to see you this Saturday. Uh, sign up if you get a chance to do that. Uh, see our team out in the lobby. There we'll be out there talking about meal pack, answering any of your questions that you have about that. Hope you have a great week. Enjoy the beautiful day. Let's stand and sing one more time.